I love those commercials. I can't imagine giving my wife a car for Christmas <laughs> when I was broke. It'd be like giving payments. I gave you payments for Christmas and a higher insurance bill. That's nuts. But if you look on the TV, you're like, oh man, I wish my husband did that for me. He would have put a bow on a car. I wish that would have happened. Like that's not real life. That's pretend. That's pretend. And what we think is right, we often value more than what's real. Because what's real comes with compounding, not experiences, emotions, hurts and blessings. It's complicated. It's messy, just like all good things are. Hello and welcome. This is Brian Delaney with Unlock Potential, where we get together with top experts in their field who have simple, profound advice to help you and I live better lives, to be able to be more fit to serve the people around us and answer that question, the question that nags within all of us, how good can I be and how great can I make it for people around me? Comparison can be an incredibly helpful tool. It also can be a trap, all right? And just like anything else, if you have a power tool, right? I remember when I first started doing construction, when I would use the saw all the time, I'd, I'd put the two by four up on the table. You know, there was a two by four under each on, under each ed edge of it, and I would cut through the middle, and it would kick and bind and you know almost get me. And I was using I was using the tool for its purpose the wrong way right and i think that's how the comparison trap is formed if we use uh, the compare if we use comparison as a power tool for ourselves in order to grow ourselves then we compare ourselves to ourselves right we compete with others we don't compare with others we compete with others like competition with others is important where the trap comes in is when we compare ourselves to everyone else instead of just a one person. Like even a one person would be better than everyone else, but we we look at our behind the scenes because we know it and every, you know the people around us know it and we compare it to their show. And I would I would, you know, growing up you see the muscle and fitness magazines and you see, you know, or you're watching a movie and you see this beautiful person and they have that six pack abs and they've got all that. <laughs> That's a picture of one moment in time that didn't even exist for a day. In fact, if it did, they would have died, right? When you see the Olympia competitors get up on the stage for bodybuilding, they can look like that for moments, not for months. And even in those moments, they're taking away like taking away years off their life as a result of the dehydration and the, the sickness that they bring out on their body. And so when it comes to it, let's develop definitions. Let's develop definitions. I want to be wealthy. Well, how wealthy? Well, I want to be as wealthy as I, I want to be as wealthy as uh, Warren Buffett. Okay. <laughs> what did he do? Are you willing to do what he did? Because if you're willing to do what he did the way he did it, you'll get what he get got the way he get, got it. And so it's okay to compare yourself. And you, if you have that appetite, just understand that everything in excellence is going to cause something else to be in lack. So just understand the trade-offs there. And it doesn't mean you have to trade off everything. It just means that your life should be built on your values rather than just what you see and judge from a place of ignorance. And so when you look and say, well, I want to, you know, I want to be like so-and-so, he's got a private jet. Well, did he rent it or did he buy it? Right? Is he on jet share? Was it just for the video in order to give the plane company hype? Right? What was it for? Was it to extract value or was it to add value? Ask, ask yourself why, why that happened. Listen, I want my life to be a hip hop video just as much as that other people. I want to have a tiger. I want to have a boat. I want to, <laughs> I want to be surrounded by good looking people drinking the best booze in the world. I want all that. And you know what? I haven't owned a tiger and I don't have a boat, but I've had a lot of awesome experiences in these incredible places, seeing some of the most beautiful places on earth. And I still have so many yet to see. I've had those experiences and you know what wasn't there? A camera. 
a camera wasn't there. Nobody, we were just in the moment. We were hanging out and maybe a camera came out at the beginning or the end, but the point wasn't the camera. The point was the experience with the people in the place. And so when it's, when it's there, don't live your life for consumption, live your life for, to be present. Just be present there with the people. I watch people and I've done it too. I've watched people distract themselves out of the joy of being able to experience those things. And I remember a dear friend of mine, he came to a realization, 40 years old, diagnosed with stage four cancer. He was like me, you know, he'd be around other people. We'd all be on our phones. I remember him saying, I can't believe I wasted so much freaking time doing that. When I was, I was with, I was with him when he, he was given three to six months to live. And I was with him again when he was given three to six months to live. And then another three to six months to live until it was three and a half years. Till it was three and a half years. And he kept saying the same thing. He kept saying the same thing. He said, he said, dream as if you're going to live forever, but live as if you're going to die to uh, die today. He said, do it. Say the things that need to be said to the people you need to say them to. Get what's inside out. Sing your song, dance your dance, do your thing. Do that crap. Do it. And yeah, absolutely. Get the, we, him and I, we have awesome pictures from when our families had a dinner cooked for us in uh, the bush of the Serengeti. It was uh, incredible. Incredible. You can see in those pictures, the guys line, uh, with uh, the ARs sitting there. And we were like, we were thinking, well, this is a really cool story, right? Because because the idea, right, the perception is that those guys are holding these submachine guns to protect us from the lions that are out there. That would make sense from the leopards that are out there. You know what the most dangerous animal is? Buffalo, right? The reality and our perception of other people's reality can be so far off that we don't even know what to protect ourselves against and not what not to be worried about sometimes. And so we spend our lives living in the recent in other people's recent past rather than living in our own near and powerful present. And I I agree that grieves me. That gets me messed up because I know I can fall into that trap. I know it's addictive and it was designed to be that way. So if you find yourself in this place where you you're, you're like, oh, I just love what, looking at all that stuff. You don't really love it. You, you may love it. You may be one of those people who love it, but you may love other things more. And it was designed to keep you addicted because we prefer, as people, we prefer new things over things that we know that we have to work for. We prefer novelty over persistence. And so when you have a feed that's always feeding you new things to compare yourself to, it's hard to keep track of the names it's hard to keep track of the places. And so all of a sudden you feel, well, this person is always going on vacations. It's not, it's them and 10 other people are, uh, one of them's always going on a vacation and they may be doing it on credit card debt and they may be having an argument. How many times have you been on a vacation and you heard people screaming at their kids? I worked at a ski resort. How many times did I hear, we're supposed to be having a great time. <laughs> figured out that person was thinking more about the money they spent on the lift ticket and the ski rental than they were trying to figure out why their child is messed up like <laughs> hungry hangry lonely tired figure it out take one parent take the grumpy kid take one parent take the other kids it seems simple that's because it is simple but in the moment when we get distracted the problems can seem to move when they've always been in the same place and that place is between our ears Right. And what lets things between our ears are our eyes. And what lets things in there is this feeling of insufficiency. And so what I want people to know is that you're you're good enough. You don't need the things they have to be who you are. You don't need to go travel the world to, to be worldly. Right. You don't need to go to all these different countries and do all that. Have those experiences if you can, but if not, create those experiences where, where you are because it's really the experiences give you a feeling and that feeling, once you have felt that, you can, you can bring that anywhere with you because it's now with you. There are so many people who are looking for, the, who, who are looking for somebody to create an oasis in the midst of a desolate neighborhood where all the houses look the same and they're all cookie cutter and nobody can tell the difference. They're looking for somebody to create 
a, some sort of recognizable experience that's actually human and not machine manufactured because they live in this place where everything looks the same and the only thing that makes you unique is what you spend money on. And I'll say, if you want to be unique because of what you want to spend money on, spend money on uh, learning from the teachers who you love. You can't spend money with me. I don't know how, I don't need, I don't know how to take your money, right? But there's other teachers who can teach you what you need to know. And that will actually be a difference. Not the car you have payments for. I, I love those commercials. I can't imagine giving my wife a car for Christmas <laughs> when I was broke. It'd be like giving payments. I gave you payments for Christmas and a higher insurance bill. That's nuts. But if you look on the TV, you're like, oh man, I wish my husband did that for me. He would have put a bow on a car. I wish that would have happened. Like that's not real life. That's pretend. That's pretend. And what we think is right, we often value more than what's real. Because what's real comes with compounding, not experiences, emotions, hurts and blessings. It's complicated. It's messy, just like all good things are. So be prepared to be messy, not perfect, real, not a, not a duplicate. That, that's the gift. Thank you all for joining our conversations. We're developing this platform for simple, profound tools and techniques that can help you get the best out of your life and more importantly, unlock potential. You can find me across all social platforms at the Brian Delaney and online. Come visit us at thebriandelaney.com.